Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on kinematics with me, Mr. H. The topic of this video is calculating the displacement from the area of a velocity time graph. Here are the questions we wish to answer. What's the significance of the area between the line on a velocity time graph and the time axis? And how does one perform an area calculation in order to determine the displacement from a velocity time graph? Let's get started. Let's begin by considering this question. Consider a car that moves at 4 meters per second for 5.0 seconds. Calculate the displacement of the car. We'll solve this problem by using the average velocity equation. V average equal displacement over time. We'll rearrange it so that we have displacement D equal average velocity times time. Now for a car traveling at a constant velocity of 4.0 meters per second, that 4.0, that's the average. It's also the constant. So we'll multiply that by the time and we end up getting 20 meters as the displacement. Now we're going to look at a different look at this differently. We're going, to we're going to consider a velocity time graph. And when we draw the velocity time graph for this motion, we have a horizontal line at 4.0 meters per second. Now I've heard that the area under this line is equal to the displacement. So I'm going to shade in the area between the line on the velocity time graph and the time axis, and I'm going to calculate its area. It's a rectangle, so I'm going to go base times height. 4.0 meters per second times 5 seconds. That comes out to be an area of 20 meters. And wouldn't you know that area is equal to the displacement. So we're going to make it an initial premise that the displacement of an object is equal to the area under the line on a velocity time graph. And at least for this situation, it's true. So now, let's try a second problem. And in this problem, it's about an accelerated motion. Starting from rest, a car accelerates to a velocity of 4.0 meters per second for five seconds. What is the displacement? Now I can approach this problem from the average velocity equation. I use the equation displacement is equal to average velocity times time. Now for a car that starts at rest and finishes at 4 meters per second, the average of its velocities is 2 meters per second. And I take that average of 0 to 4, that is I take 2, and I multiply it by the time of 5 and I get a displacement of 10 meters. Now let's test the premise that the displacement of the object is equal to the area under the line on a velocity time graph. So I'm going to draw a velocity time graph for this situation of a car accelerating from 0 meters per second to 4 meters per second over the course of 5 seconds and there you see it. And then I'm going to cal calculate the area under the line, that is between the line and the time axis. That's a triangle, so I'm going to have to use one half the base of the triangle multiplied by the height of the triangle. The base is 5 seconds and the height is 4 meters per second, so I go one half times 5 times 4, and when you know it comes out to be 10 meters again. So we recognize that for our two situations that the area under the line on a velocity time graph is equal to the displacement of the object. So we have it. The area is equal to the displacement. But how do you calculate the area? Well, there's three basic types of calculations you're going to do. The first type is the type in which you have a constant velocity object. It ends up for such a velocity time graph, it's a horizontal line, so the area underneath that line is a rectangle, and you go the base of the rectangle times the height of the rectangle to get the area. That area calculation gives you the displacement. Or you could have an accelerated motion for an object starting from rest. It would end up that for such a, a motion, the line on the velocity time graph is a diagonal line that starts at the time axis. Thus, the area between the line and the time axis ends up being a triangle, and you calculate its area as one half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. And finally, the most difficult calculation is if you have a motion in which the object starts with an initial velocity other than zero and then accelerates, either slowing down or speeding up, but doesn't finish at zero. In such a situation, the area under the line on the velocity time graph is a trapezoid. And to calculate the area of a trapezoid, you have two options. 
One of them is to go one half times the base times the quantity height at one side plus height at the other side. The other option is to divide that trapezoid into a rectangle and a triangle and then to calculate the area of each and add them together. Those are the three basic types of area calculations that you will do in an effort to calculate the displacement of the object. Now we're going to do three examples of area calculations, one using each of the equations. The first situation is Lisa Ford drives at a constant speed of 18 meters per second for 12 seconds to determine the displacement. This is a constant velocity situation, so for such graphs we're going to use a rectangular area calculation. So here's the graph of Lisa Ford keeping her speed constant at 18 meters per second for 12 seconds. The area between the line and the time axis, well that's the displacement. So we go 18 meters per second multiplied by 12 seconds, that's the area of a rectangle, and we end up with the value for the displacement. It ends up being 216 meters. Now let's try a different situation, and this is the acceleration from rest situation in a hurry, accelerates from rest to 32 meters per second in 4 seconds, determine the displacement. So now when we plot the motion, we're going to start with 0 meters per second at a time of 0, and then we're accelerating, so we have a diagonal line that finishes at 32 meters per second at 4 seconds. Now the area calculation will involve a triangular area, and so that's 1 half the base times the height. The base of this triangle is 4 Four seconds and the height of it is 32 meters per second. So when we do our math on this we go 1 half times 32 times 4 and we end up getting 64 meters for the area under the triangle. That's the displacement of the object. Now our final example will be the most difficult calculation of all because it will be an accelerated motion not starting from rest. Jeremy accelerates from 4 meters per second to 12.0 meters per second in 5 seconds to determine the displacement. Now when we plot the velocity time graph we're not going to start at 0, we're going to start at 4 and by the time we get to 5 seconds the line will have traveled up to the 12 meter per second mark. Now when we go to calculate the area it's going to be a trapezoidal area. So we have to use the trapezoid equation. We're going to go area or displacement is equal to one half times the base of five seconds multiplied by 4 meters per second plus 12 meters per second. When we do the math on that, we end up with 40 meters as our displacement. That's the, that, or that's the area, and that's also the displacement. An alternative means of doing this problem is to break that trapezoid up into a rectangle and a triangle and calculating the area of each. There you see it on the diagram. The area of the rectangle is going to be base times height. The base of that rectangle is 5 seconds and the height is 4 meters per second, so the area of the rectangle is 20 meters. Then we do the triangle's area. You have to be a little careful on this. The base is certainly 5 seconds, but the height is not 12 because the, the triangle doesn't start at 0. The height is 4 to 12, or 8 meters. So you go 1 half times 5 times 8, that comes out to be 20 meters also. You add the triangle area of 20 to the rectangle area of 20 meters, and you get 40 meters, the same thing that you got from the trapezoid formula. So you can see there's two ways to calculate the area of a trapezoid. Either way you get the same answer. The displacement of this object is 40 meters. Now it's your turn to practice and you're going to get the difficult one. A car is moving at an initial speed of 20 meters per second and then accelerates up to 30 meters per second for 10 seconds. Construct the VT graph and determine the displacement. So here's what I'd like you to do. Get out a sheet of scratch paper and just do a sketch of what the velocity time graph looks like. Solve the problem for displacement. That's an area calculation. You've got a couple choices here. You could do the trapezoid area formula, or you could break up the area into a triangle and rectangle. Now pause the video, solve the problem, and when you're done, press play, and we'll see how you did. Okay, here's what I hope happened. First, you're going to draw the, the, draw the velocity time graph. Start at 20 and have the line 
rise up to 30. Have that happen over the course of 10 seconds. Be a wise idea, just as I've done, to sketch down some numbers along the vertical axes and the horizontal axes. Now you're ready to do the calculation of displacement. You have two options here. One of them is to use the trapezoidal formula. That may be the easiest one, if you remember it. You go 1 half times the base of 10 multiplied by the the, the, the quantity 20 plus 30, the height 1 plus the height 2, the height on the left side plus the height on the right side. And when you do that, you get your answer. I didn't do it that way. I used the, the, the idea of breaking that trapezoid up into a triangle and a rectangle. And then I calculated the area of my rectangle. It's a base of 10 and a height of 20, so I got 200 meters for the area of my rectangle. Then I calculated the area of the triangle. That's where you have to be a little careful. The triangle sits on top of the rectangle. If you check out the, the velocity axis on the left, you'll notice that the height of that triangle is 10, not 30. It starts at 20 and finishes at 30, so its height is 10. Its base is 10, so I go 1 half times 10 times 10. That gets me the area of the triangle of 50 meters, and I add these two areas together. I get 250 meters, the same thing that I would have gotten if I went 1 half base of 10 times the quantity 20 plus 30. You get the same answer, 250 meters, and that's the displacement. Now we're going to discuss a few situations which can be troublesome to students. And the first one is the situation in which you have a negative area. Let's suppose you have a car and it starts at 30, it's moving 32 meters per second to the left, and then it decelerates to a stop, as shown here in this velocity time graph. If the car is moving to the left, and if we define left as negative, then the line ends up being underneath the time axis. And when you go to calculate the area, you have to find the area between the line on the graph and the time axis. And it ends up being negative. The calculation is 1 half base times height, where the height is negative 32. So you end up with a negative 64 meters as your area. Now in physics, when you do a calculation, you end up with a negative number. More often than not, that negative has physical significance. It doesn't have numerical significance like less than zero. It has physical significance like in the negative direction, whichever way we define the negative direction to be. Oftentimes we define negative as being to the left or being down or being south. And so in this situation when we calculate 64 meters negative, that is the same as saying the displacement is 64 meters to the left since it's describing a car that's moving leftward. The second potentially troublesome situation is when an object changes its direction. For such a situation, the line on the velocity time graph is going to cross the, the time axis, thus leaving an area above the time axis and a second area below the time axis. For example, if we projected a ball up into an, the air at 49 meters per second, it would take five seconds for that ball to reach its highest point, and then it would fall back down. So at five seconds, the ball changing directions. We'll learn more about the mathematics associated with this later in this video tutorial series. But for now, just take a peek at the graph and notice there's this positive area for moving upwards and then there's this negative area for when the ball is moving downwards. To calculate the displacement of the ball, we would have to add up these two areas, first calculating them separate from one another, they're both triangles, and then adding the two displacements or the two areas together. Well, we've talked about the situation which you calculate the area of a triangle, the area of a rectangle, and the area of a trapezoid. But what if you have to calculate the area of a car? or some odd-shaped graph like you see here. You often get these graphs for multi-stage motions that are rather complex. Like in this case, we have an acceleration from rest, and then a constant speed motion, and then an acceleration from that speed to a higher speed, and then a constant speed motion, and then decelerating to zero. Now, for this situation, to find the displacement, you have to find the area between the line on the graph 
or lines on the graph and the time axis. So the only way to do this is to break the entire area up into several smaller trapezoids and triangles and rectangles and then to calculate the entire area as you see here. You just try to find a way to break it up into areas that you can compute. You can compute all the areas and then add them together. And that's what we would do here. Okay, now it's your turn to practice and you got a hard one. Here we see a multi-stage motion of an object and it's represented by a velocity time graph. And your goal is to calculate the displacement of the object. Fortunately, it's already been broken up into areas. And so you have five areas to calculate and then you have to find the total displacement. Now organize yourself, get out a sheet of scratch paper and do your work and pause the video while you're doing it. And then when you're ready, press play and we'll see how you did. Okay, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna calculate the areas of area one through five. And you see my work there. For area one, it's a rectangle, so I go base times height, five times 10. For area two, it's also a rectangle, so I'm gonna go base times height, five times 10, it's 50. For area three, it has a base of five and a height of 10, but I gotta go one half base times height because it's a triangle, I get 25. Area four is a large or a tall rectangle, so I'm gonna go a base of five times a height of 20, and I get 100. And then finally for area five, it's a triangle, I'm gonna go one half base of five times a height of 20, and I end up with 50. If I add my five areas together, I get a displacement of 275 meters. How did you do? Okay, we've done it. We've accomplished the objectives. We've learned that the significance of the area between the line on a VT graph and the time axis is that it's the displacement. And we've learned how to calculate it depending on whether it's a rectangular area, a triangular area, or a trapezoidal area. It's at this time in every video that I'd like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps to help you out to make this learning stick. But before I help you out with that action plan, I'd like to ask you to help us out. If you like the video, could you tap on the like button down below? And if you like the video, maybe you'd like to subscribe to the channel because we have a whole lot more videos coming at you. And finally, if you have a question or a comment, you can leave them down below. Okay, now for the action plan. The first thing I'd like to call your attention to is that we have an area on our website called the calculator pad with a series of problems followed by answers followed by an audio guided solution. And if you go off to that area of our website, you can see the link down below in the description section. You might want to try questions number 13, 14, 16, and 17 in the kinematics chapter. The second way I could help you out to make this learning stick is if you're a Minds on Physics learner, you can grab app number one. And when you do, you'll see three different modules on app number one. You're looking for the second module, the kinematic graphing module, and you're looking for mission KG8. In that mission, you have to calculate slopes and displacement. Great practice. Go give it a try. Finally, if you're a reader or you just need a reference, head off to our website. You'll see lesson four is on velocity time graphs, and there's a whole page on the topic of calculating the area. It might be a great reference for you. Whichever method you try to solidify your learning, I wish you the best of luck.